So before jumping into the topic, just a quick survey. How many of you are familiar with or uh, using containers and in production? Like uh, how many of you have services running in containers? Okay. So this topic is about uh, how to secure uh, or how to make uh, container environment more safer, considering that containers uh, sh uh, share the same kernel on the server. So this is one uh, attempt or method to make those containers run in a safe uh, or run safely. So today, uh, the containers, uh, as I said before, they share the same kernel on the host or, on, or they're on the same VM. They, uh, they basically, they share the same kernel. Uh, they are these technologies, namespaces, SecComp and AppArmor and um, some a few others technologies in provided by the kernel. They provide a barrier uh, protection between the containers. But uh, uh, container isolation is actually, we can say that is as uh, strong as the, the kernel. Uh, and uh, if, for example, the kernel is compromised and uh, the barriers between, or the boundaries between the containers can disappear, meaning uh, we lose the isolation between containers as soon as the the kernel is uh, compromised. So, uh, oops, sorry. So, uh, we uh, this this concept or this uh, talk is about uh, how we can make the kernel uh, safe, or how can how can how we can protect the kernel uh, and make it uh, safer. So, can the pro uh, this is like kernel protect itself? Yeah, we can do that, uh, and uh, I'll talk about it now. What is it about? So this uh, kernel protection is, uh, idea is to protect uh, uh, kernel resources, uh, like uh, for example, uh, uh, interrupt descriptor tables or uh, any other kernel resource that needs to be, uh, that, that needs not, that, like, that should not be modified or uh, need to be tampered with. We can protect those uh, resources uh, by making those, uh, for example, some, some kernel resources are only read-only maybe like uh, something like const or IDT or uh, system descriptor tables. Uh, and also the processor state, for example, uh, with, with Intel there is something called control registers. So once the kernel sets the control register during its init, then, then they, uh, those registers should not be tampered with or manipulated again. So with this, uh, uh, with this uh, method, our idea, uh, we can uh, help monitor any changes to those kernel resources or uh, processor state. And uh, how this one helps, uh, uh, as I said, uh, this helps monitor and protect the system resources. Uh, uh, and uh, for, uh, for that matter, any range of kernel memory, if it deems to be protected, we can uh, protect or uh, monitor that resource. And um, with this idea, also we can extend the CPU features. For example, older platforms will not have the newer uh, security features. So we can provide those newer features on older platforms using this uh, uh, concept. And these, all this we can achieve uh, without any or with minimal modifications to the kernel. These are examples of system resources. So how, now we'll come to how, how it is done. So this idea uh, revolves around using uh, uh, VTX, uh, I mean, uh, using a uh, virtualization technology. In in terms of Intel, it is uh, VTX. So we we uh, idea idea is to run the Linux or the host OS in guest mode, so that we can uh, leverage the advantages of uh, ad no advantages meaning uh, isolation and security features available in virtualization uh, for uh, Linux. That is uh, host OS. We we specify policies for protecting the resources, meaning. Uh, I'll go over it in the next slide. Uh, idea is to use a thin hypervisor, possibly an extension to KVM, to handle this uh, protection, kernel protection. Uh, so this is about the policies. So we, uh, I, uh, we can mention the asset, meaning for example, let's say IDT. We can say IDT to be monitored, and uh, how, how we want to protect the IDT. It should not be written to so we can say read only. And uh, for example, if there is an attempt by some malicious software or some exploit in the kernel changing the IDT, we can monitor it and uh, we can uh, terminate that attempt. So concluding, uh, 
where we are now, uh, we have a functional POC uh, to switch the Linux into uh, guest mode, running Linux into guest mode, and uh, we are, right now we are adding uh, code for implementing the policies that I mentioned in the previous slide. And uh, we are planning to submit uh, patches uh, um, into the community sooner. Yeah. I think uh, I'm much well ahead of time. So if there are any questions, uh, I can take them. Anything, uh, anything uh, that has uh, VT, uh, virtualization? I think lot, VDX, it uses VDX for Intel, yeah. Uh, let me just show you, yeah. No, the, the patches for, uh, this is not, they are not public yet. So we are planning to make them soon. So guess mode, uh, in specifically in Intel terms, uh, we are using non-root mode in VTX. So when you run a processor in non-root mode, uh, you get to take, uh, uh, the, you, you can basically use the features like EPT or uh, uh, VMCS. If you are aware of VMCS in uh, Intel VTX, it can, if a processor is executing certain instructions, you can trap them and uh, check them whether it's valid or not. It's pretty much the same uh, because uh, we are making the interrupts and I.O. instructions, all of them pass through. So if any, there are any interrupts or if there are any I.O. instructions, they kind of run uh, without being trapped into root mode. KVM is just, uh, uh, idea is to use KVM as, uh, and extend KVM to implement this the operations that needs to be done in root mode, we kind of use extend KVM module to handle those operations. It can be any other uh, hypervisor. KVM is just one uh, uh, one way to do it. So if you don't intend to run hypervisors, you cannot get away with this? Uh, well, uh, we need something, some module, kernel module to, may, uh, to intercept those uh, operations in the root mode. So we need something that executes uh, in root mode. So that means the whole yeah. A module in the host operating system. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. This is like uh, done once after init, for example, once uh, the boot is complete. Oh, it's kernel init, not the processor init. Yeah. Uh, once the kernel is booted and uh, when once, you, for example, if you start running, once before you start running any application, you can switch, make this active, and then you are done. Yeah. And then uh, only thing you can do at runtime is specifying policies, like what you need to protect, how, how you want to protect. That can be done at runtime. 